hapless Aegean, whom the fates have marked to bear the extremity of dire mishap. Now trust me, were it not against our laws, against my crown, my oath, my dignity, which princes would, they may not disannul, my soul should sue as advocate for thee. But though thou art adjudged to the death, and passed sentence may not be recalled but to our honour's great disparagement, yet will I favour thee in what I can. Therefore, Aegean, I limit thee this day to seek thy help by beneficial hap. Try all the friends thou hast in Ephesus. Beg thou or borrow to make up the sum and live. If no, then thou art doomed to die. Jailer, take him to thy custody. I will, my lord. Hopeless and helpless doth the Aegean wend, but to procrastinate his lifeless end. Aegean has identical twin sons named Antipolis, and they have identical twin servants named Dromeo. Many years ago, a shipwreck scattered the family. Aegean supposes his wife, Emilia, drowned, and has come to Ephesus in search of his second son. Unknown to him, this Antipholus is in fact living in Ephesus, married to Adriana. The other Antipholus of Syracuse and Hydro follow Aegean to Ephesus. Therefore, give out your arab epidamnum, lest that your goods too soon be confiscated. Every day a Syracusian merchant apprehended for arrival here, and not being able to buy out his life according to the statute of the town, dies ere the weary sun set in the west. Now there is your money that I had to keep. Go bear it to the centre where we host, and stay there, Dromeo, till I come to thee. Within this hour it will be dinner time. Till that, I'll view the manners of the town, peruse the traders, gaze upon the buildings, and then return and sleep within mine inn. For with long travel I am stiff and weary. Get thee away. Many a man would take you at your word, and go indeed, having so good a mean. <laughs> a trusty villain, sir, that very oft when I am dull with care and melancholy, lightens my humour with his merry jests. What, will you walk with me about them, and then go to my inn? I am invited, sir, to certain merchants, of whom I hope to make much benefit. I crave your pardon. As soon at five o'clock, please, you I'll meet with you upon the mart, and afterward consort you till bedtime. My present business calls me from you now. Farewell till then. I will go lose myself and wander up and down to view the city. Sir, I commend you to your own contempt. He that commends me to mine own contempt commends me to the thing I cannot get. I, to the world, am like a drop of water that in the ocean seeks another drop, who, falling there to find his fellow forth, unseen, inquisitive, confounds himself. So I, to find a mother and a brother, in quest of them, unhappier, lose myself. Here comes the almanac of my true date. Dromeo, how chance thou art return so soon? Return so soon? Rather approach too late. The cape and burns, the pig falls from the spit. The clock has struck and twelve upon the bell. My mistress made it one upon my cheek. She is so hot because the meat is cold. The meat is cold because you come not home. You come not home because you have no stomach. You have no stomach having broke your fast. But we that know what is to fast and pray are penitent for your default today. Stop in your wind, sir. Tell me this, I pray. Where have you left the money that I gave you? Oh, sixpence that I had a Wednesday last to pay the saddler for my mistress crupper. The saddler had it, sir. I kept it not. I am not in a sportive humour now. Tell me, and dally not, where is the money? We being strangers here, how darest thou trust so great a charge from thine own custody? I pray you jest, sir, as you sit at dinner. I from my mistress come to you in post. If I return, I shall be post indeed, for she will score your fault upon my pate. Methinks you're more like mine should be your clock, and strike you home without a messenger. Come, Dromeo, come. These jests are out of season. Reserve them till a merrier hour than this. Where is the gold I gave in charge to thee? To me, sir? Why, you gave no gold to me. Come on, sir knave. Have done your foolishness, and tell me how thou hast disposed thy charge. My charge was but to fetch you from the mart home to your house, the phoenix, sir, to dinner. My mistress and her sister stay for you. Now, as I am a Christian, answer me in what safe place you have bestowed my money. Or I shall break that merry sconce of yours that stands on tricks when I am undisposed. Where is the thousand marks thou hadst of me? I have some marks of yours upon my pate, some of my mistress marks upon my shoulders, but not a thousand marks between you both. If I should pay your worship those again, perchance she will not bear them patiently. Thy mistress marks? What mistress slave hast thou? Your worship's wife, my mistress at the Phoenix. 
She that doth fast till you come home to dinner, and prays that you will hie you home to dinner. What, wilt thou flog me thus unto my face, being forbid? There, take you that, sir, man. No! Oh, what mean you, sir? Well, for God's sake, hold your hands! Nay, and you will not, sir. I'll take my heels. Upon my life, by some device or other, the villain is o'erwrought of all my money. They say this town is full of cousinage, as nimble jugglers that deceive the eye, dark-working sorcerers that change the mind, soul-killing witches that deform the body, disguised cheaters, prating mountebanks, and many such like liberties of sin. If it proves so, I will be gone the sooner. I'll to the center to go seek this slave. I greatly fear my money is not safe. Neither my husband nor the slave returned that in such haste I sent to seek his master. Sure, Luciana, it is two o'clock. Well, perhaps some merchant hath invited him, and from the mart he's somewhere gone to dinner. <laughs> oh, here comes your man. Now is your husband nigh. Say, is your tardy master now at hand? Nay, he's at two hands with me, and that my two ears can witness. Say, didst thou speak with him? Knowest thou his mind? Aye, aye, he told his mind upon mine ear, but shrew his hand, I scarce could understand it. Spake he so doubtfully, thou couldst not feel his meaning? Nay, he struck so plainly, I could too well feel his blows, and withal so doubtfully that I could scarce understand them. But say, I prithee, is he coming home? It seems he hath great care to please his wife. Why, mistress, sure, my master is horn mad. Horn mad, thou villain? I mean, not cuckold mad, but sure he is stark mad. When I desired him to come home to dinner, he asked me for a thousand marks in gold. Tis dinner time, quoth I. My gold, quoth he. Your meat doth burn, quoth I. My gold, quoth he. Will you come home, quoth I. My gold, quoth he. Where is the thousand marks I gave thee, villain? The pig, quoth I, is burned. My gold, quoth he. My mistress, sir, quoth I, hang up thy mistress. I know not thy mistress. Out on my mistress. Quoth who? Quoth my master. I know, quoth he, no house, no wife, no mistress. So that my errand due unto my tongue, I thank him, I bear home upon my shoulders. For in conclusion, he did beat me there. Go back again, thou slave, and fetch him home. Go back again and be new beaten home? For God's sake, send some other messenger. Back, slave, or I will break thy pate across. And he will bless that cross with other beating. Between you, I shall have a holy head. Hence, prating peasant, fetch thy oh, master oh, home. Oh, am I so round with you as you with me, that like a football you do spurn me thus? You spurn me hence, and he will spurn me hither. If I last in this service, you must case me in leather. The gold I gave to Dromeo is laid up safe at the centre. And the heedful slave is wandered forth in care to seek me out. By computation on mine host's report, I could not speak with Dromeo since at first I sent him from the mart. <coughs> See, here he comes. How now, sir? Is your merry humour altered? As you love stroke, so jest with me again. You know no centre. You receive no gold. Your mistress sent to have me home to dinner. My house was at the Phoenix. Wast thou mad that thus so madly thou didst answer me? What answer, sir? When spake I such a word? Even now, even here, not half an hour since. I did not see you since you sent me hence home to the centre with the gold you gave me. Villain, thou didst deny the gold's receipt, and toldst me of a mistress and a dinner, for which I hope thou felt I was displeased. Oh, I'm glad to see you in this merry vein. What means this jest? I pray you, master, tell me. Yea, dost thou jeer and flout me in the teeth? Think'st thou I jest? Hold, take thou that oh, and that! Oh, hold, sir, for God's sake! Now, how oh, your jest is earnest! Upon what bargain do you give it me? Because that I familiarly sometimes do use you for my fool and chat with you, your sauciness will jest upon my love and make a common of my serious hours. When the sun shines, let foolish gnats make sport, but creep in crannies when he hides his beams. If you will jest with me, know my aspect. And fashion your demeanour to my looks, or I will beat this method in your sconce. Oh, sconce call you it. So you would leave batting, I'd rather have it ahead. When you use these blows long, I must get a sconce for my head, and ensconce it too, or else I shall seek my wit in my shoulders. But I pray you, sir, why am I beaten? Dost thou not know? Nothing, sir, but that I am beaten. Shall I tell you why? Aye, sir, and wherefore? For they say, every why hath a wherefore. Why, first for flouting me, and then wherefore for urging it the second time to me. Was there ever any man thus beaten out of season, when in the why and the wherefore is neither rhyme nor reason? 
Well, sir, I thank you. Thank me, sir, for what? Many, sir, for this something that you gave me for nothing. I'll make you amends next to give you nothing for something. But soft, who wafts us yonder? I, I, Antipholus, look strange and frown. Some other mistress hath thy sweet aspects. I am not Adriana, nor thy wife. The time was once when thou unearthed wouldst bow, that never words were music to thine ear, that never objects pleasing in thine eye, that never touch well welcome to thy hand, that never meet sweet savoured in thy taste, unless I spake or looked or touched or carved to thee. How comes it now, my husband? Oh, how comes it that thou art then estranged from thyself? Thyself, I call it being strange to me, that undividable incorporate and better than thy dear self's better part. Oh, do not tear away thyself from me. For oh, no, my love, as easy mayst thou fall a drop of water in the breaking gulf, and take unmingled thence that drop again without addition or diminishing, as take from me thyself and not me too. How dearly would it touch thee to the quick, shouldst thou but hear I were licentious, and that this body, consecrate to thee, by ruffian lust should be contaminate? Wouldst thou not spit at me, and spurn at me, and hurl the name of husband in my face, and tear the stained skin off my harlot brow, and from my false hand cut the wedding ring, and break it with a deep divorcing vow? Plead you to me, fair dame. I know you not. In Ephesus I am but two hours old, as strange unto your town as to your talk, who every word, by all my wit being scanned, want wit in all one word to understand. Fie, brother! How the world is changed with you! When were you wont to use my sister thus? She sent for you by Dromeo home to dinner. By Dromeo? By me? By thee! And this thou didst return from him that he did buffet thee, and in his blows denied my house for his, me for his wife. Did you converse, sir, with this gentlewoman? What is the course and drift of your compact? Aye, sir, I never saw her till this time. Villain, thou liest, for even her very words didst thou deliver to me on the mount. I never spake with her in all my life. How can she thus then call us by our names, unless it be by inspiration? How ill agrees it with your gravity to counterfeit thus grossly with your slave, abetting him to thwart me in my mood? Be it my wrong, you are from me exempt, but wrong not that wrong with a more contempt. Come, I will fasten on this sleeve of thine. Thou art an elm, my husband, I a vine, whose weakness, married to thy stronger state, makes me with thy strength to communicate. If aught possess thee from me, it is dross, usurping ivy, brad, or idle moss, who all for want of pruning with intrusion infect thy sap and live on thy confusion. To me she speaks. She moves me for her feet. What? Was I married to her in my dream? Or sleep I now and think I hear all this? What error drives our eyes and ears amiss? Until I know this sure uncertainty, I'll entertain the offered fallacy. Dromeo, go bid the servants spread for dinner. Oh, for my beads, I cross me for a sinner. This is the fairy land, oh, spite of spites. We talk with goblins, owls and sprites. If we obey them not, this will ensue. They'll suck our breath or pinch us black and blue. Why prate'st thou to thyself and answerest not? Dromeo, thou drone, thou snail, thou slug, thou sot. I am transformed, master, am not I? I think thou art in mind, and so am I. Nay, master, both in mind and in my shape. Well, thou hast thine own form. No, I am an ape. If thou art changed to aught, tis to an ass. It's true, she rides me, and I long for grass. Tis so, I am an ass. Else it could never be, but I should know her as well as she knows me. Come, come, no longer will I be a fool to put the finger in the eye and weep whilst man and master laugh my woes to scorn. Come, sir, to dinner. Dromeo, keep the gate. Husband, I'll dine above with you today and shrive you of a thousand idle pranks. Sirrah, if any ask you for your master, say he dines forth and let no creature enter. Come, sister. Dromeo, play the porter well. Am I in earth, in heaven, or in hell? Sleeping or waking? Mad or well advised? Known unto these, and to myself disguised? 
I'll say as they say, and persever so. And in this mist, at all adventures, go. Master, shall I be porter at the gate? Aye, and let none enter, lest I break your pate. Come, come, Antipholus, we dine too late. Antipholus of Ephesus has bought a chain for Adriana from Angelo, a goldsmith. Good, Signor Angelo, you must excuse us all. My wife is shrewish when I keep not ours. Say that I lingered with you at your shop to see the making of her golden chain, and that tomorrow you will bring it home. <sighs> but here's a villain that would face me down. He met me on the mart, and that I beat him and charged him with a thousand marks in gold, and that I did deny my wife and house. Thou drunkard, thou. What didst thou mean by this? Say what you will, sir, but I know what I know, that you beat me at the mud, I have your hand to show. If the skin were parchment and the blows you gave were ink, your own handwriting would tell you what I think. I think thou art an ass. Well, you say doth appear, but the wrongs I suffer and the blows I bear. I should kick being kicked, and being at that pass you would keep from my heels, and beware of an ass. That's soft. My door is locked. Bid them let us in. Maud, Bridget, Marion... Sicily, Gillian, Jim, Moe, Maltos, Capon, Coxcomb, Idiot, Patch. Either get thee from the door or sit down at the hatch. Does that conjure for wenches that thou calls for such store when one is one too many? Go, get thee from the door. What patch is made out, Porter? My master stays in the street. Let him walk from whence he came, lest he catch cold in his feet. Who talks within there? Ho, oh, open the door. Right, sir, I'll tell you when and you'll tell me wherefore. Wherefore? For my dinner, I have not dined today. Nor the day you hear you must not. Come again when you may. What art thou that keeps me out from the house I own? The porter for this time, sir. And my name is Dromeo. Oh, villain, thou hast stolen both mine office and my name. The one there got me credit and the other mickle blame. If thou hadst been Dromeo today in my place, thou wouldst have changed thy face for an aim or thy name for an ass. Dromeo, fetch me something. I'll break up the gate. Uh, have patience, sir. Or let it not be so. Herein you war against your reputation and draw within the compass of suspect the unviolated honour of your wife. In a word, your long experience of her wisdom, her sober virtue, years and modesty, plead on her part some cause to you unknown. And doubt not, sir, but she will well excuse why at this time the doors are made against you. Be ruled by me, depart in patience, and let us to the tiger all to dinner. You have prevailed. I will depart in quiet, and in despite of mirth, mean to be merry. I know a wench of excellent discourse, pretty and witty, wild and yet uh, too gentle. <laughs> to her we will to dinner. Angelo, go fetch the chain. By this I know it is made. Bring it, I pray you, to the porpentine, for there's the house. That chain will I bestow, be it for nothing but to spite my wife upon mine hostess there. Good sir, make haste. Since mine own doors refuse to entertain me, I'll knock elsewhere to see if they'll disdain me. I'll meet you at that place some hour hence. Do so. This jest shall cost me some expense. Antiphilus of Syracuse falls in love with Luciana, Adriana's sister. And may it be that you have quite forgot her husband's office? Shall Antipholus, even in the spring of love, thy love springs rot? Shall love in building grow so ruin it? If you did wed my sister for her wealth, then for her wealth's sake use her with more kindness. Or, if you like elsewhere, do it by stealth. Muffle your false love with some show of blindness. Let not my sister read it in your eye. Be not thy tongue thy own shame's orator. Look sweet, speak fair, become disloyalty. A pair of vice like virtue's harbinger. They're a fair presence, though your heart be tainted. Teach sin the carriage of a holy saint. Be secret false. What need she be acquainted? Then, gentle brother, get you in again. Comfort my sister. Cheer her. Call her wife. Tis holy sport to be a little vain when the sweet breath of flattery conquers strife. Sweet mistress, what your name is else I know not, nor by what wonder you do hit of mine. Your weeping sister is no wife of mine, nor to her bed no homage do I owe. Far more, far more to you do I decline. What are you mad that you do reason so? Not mad, but mated. How, I do not know. It is a fault that springeth from your eye. For gazing on your beams, fair son, being mine. 
gaze where you should, and that will clear your sight. As good to wink, sweet love, as look on night. Why call you me, love? Call my sister so. Thy sister, sister. That's my sister. No, it is thyself, mine own self's better part. Mine eye's clear eye, my dear heart's dearer heart. My food, my fortune, and my sweet hope's aim. My soul, earth's heaven, and my heaven's claim. All this my sister is, or else should be. Call thyself sister, sweet, for I am thee. Thee will I love, and with thee lead my life. Thou hast no husband yet, nor I no wife. Give me thy hand. Oh, soft, I hold you still. I'll fetch my sister to get her goodwill. Why, how now, Dromeo? Where runst thou so fast? Do you know me, sir? Am I Dromeo? Am I your man? Am I myself? Thou art Dromeo. Thou art my man. Thou art thyself. I am an ass. I am a woman's man, and besides myself. What woman's man? And how besides thyself? Mary, sir, besides myself, I am due to a woman. One that claims me, one that haunts me, one that will have me. She is a wondrous fat marriage. How dost thou mean, a fat marriage? Mary, sir, she's the kitchen wench, and all grease. And I know not what use to put her to, but to make a lamp of her and run from her by her own light. I warrant her rags and the tallow in them will burn a polar winter. If she lives till doomsday, she'll burn a week longer than the whole world. What complexion is she of? Swart, like my shoe. But her face nothing likes a clean kept. For why? She sweats. A man may go over shoes in the grime of it. Well, that's a fault that water will mend. No, sir, it is in grain. Nor's flood could not do it. What's her name? Nell, sir. But her name and three quarters, that's an L and three quarters, will not measure her from hip to hip. Then she bears some breadth. No longer from hip to foot than from hip to hip. She is spherical, like a globe. I could find out countries in her. In what part of her body stands Ireland? Mary, sir, in her buttocks. I found it out with the bogs. Where, England? I looked for the chalky cliffs, but I could find no whiteness in them. But I guess it stood in her chin, by the salt room. Where, Spain? Faith, I saw it not, but I felt it hot in her breath. Where, America, the Indies? Oh, sir, upon her nose, all o'er embellished with rubies, carbuncles, sapphires, declining their rich aspect to the hot breath of Spain, who sent whole armados of caracks to be ballast at her nose. Where stood Belgium, the Netherlands? Oh, sir, I did not look so low. <laughs> to conclude, this drudge or diviner laid claim to me, called me Dromeo, swore I was assured to her, told me what pretty marks I had about me as the mark of my shoulder. The mole in my neck, the great wart on my left arm, that I, amazed, ran from her as a witch. And I think if my breast had not been made of faith and my heart of steel, she had transformed me to a curdle dog and made me turn in the wheel. Go, hie thee pleasantly, post to the road. And if the wind blow any way from shore, I will not harbour in this town tonight. If any bark put forth, come to the mart, where I will walk till thou return to me. If every one know us and we know none, tis time, I think, to trudge, pack, and be gone. As from a bear, a man would run for life. So fly I from her that would be my wife. There's none but witches do inhabit here. And therefore tis high time that I were hence. She that doth call me husband, even my soul doth for a wife abhor. But her fair sister, possessed with such a gentle sovereign grace of such enchanting presence and discourse hath almost made me traitor to myself but lest myself be guilty to self-wrong i'll stop mine ears against the mermaid song master antiphilus aye that's my name oh i know it well sir no here is the chain i thought to obtain you at the porpentine the chain unfinished made me stay thus long what is your will that I shall do with this? Oh, please yourself, sir. I have made it for you. Made it for me, sir? I bespoke it not. Oh, not once, not twice, but twenty times you have. Go home with it and please your wife with all. And soon at supper time I'll visit you and then receive my money for the chain. I pray you, sir, receive the money now, for fear you ne'er see chain nor money more. Oh, you are a merry man, sir. <laughs> Fair you will. What I should think of this I cannot tell. But this, I think, there's no man is so vain that would refuse so fair an offered chain. I see a man here needs not live by shifts. When in the streets he meets such golden gifts, I'll to the mart and therefore Dromeo stay. If any ship put out, then straight away. <laughs> And 
Antipholus of Ephesus and his Dromio, leaving the courtesan's house, meet Angelo with a merchant and an officer. While I go to the goldsmith's house, go thou and buy a rope's end. That will I bestow on my wife and her confederates for locking me out of my doors by day. But soft, I see the goldsmith. Get thee gone, buy thou a rope and bring it home to me. Oh, I buy a thousand pound a year, I buy a rope. A rope, a rope, a rope, See, a rope. Lord Antipholus, here's the note. A man is well holp up that trusts to you. I promised your presence and the chain, but neither chain nor goldsmith came to me. Belike you thought our love would last too long if it were chained together, and therefore came not. Saving your merry humour, here's the note how much your chain weighs, the utmost carat, the fineness of the gold, and chargeful fashion, which doth amount to three odd ducats more than I stand debted to this gentleman. I pray you see him presently discharged, for he is bound to see and stays back for it. I am not furnished with the present money. Besides, I have some business in the town. Good senior, take the stranger to my house, and with you take the chain, and bid my wife disperse the sum on the receipt thereof. Perchance I will be there as soon as you. Then you will bring the chain to her yourself. No, bear it with you, lest I come not time enough. Well, sir, I will. Have you the chain about you? Well, if I have not, sir, I hope you have, or else you may return without your money. Hey, come, I pray you, sir, give me the chain. Both wind and tide stays for this gentleman, and I, to blame, have held him here too long. Good Lord, you use this dalliance to excuse your breach of promise to the Porpentine. I should have chid you for not bringing it, but like a shrew, you first began to brawl. The hour steals on. I pray you, sir, dispatch. You hear how he importunes me. The chain. Why, give it to my wife and fetch your money. Come, come, you know, I gave it you, even now. Either send the chain or send by me some token. Fine, now you run this humour out of breath. Come, where's the chain? I pray you let me see. Goodness cannot brook this dalliance. Good sir, say where you'll answer me or no. If not, I'll leave him to the officer. I answer you? What should I answer you? The money that you owe me for the chain. I owe you none till I receive the chain. You know, I gave it you half an hour since. You gave me none. You wrong me much to say so. You wrong me more so and deny it. Consider how it stands upon my credit. Officer, arrest the goldsmith at my suit. I do. And charge you in the Duke's name to me. This touches me in reputation. Either consent to pay this sum for me... Or I attach you by this officer. Consent to pay thee that I never had? Arrest me, foolish fellow, if thou darest. Here is thy fee. Arrest him, officer. I would not spare my brother in this case if he should scorn me so apparently. I do arrest you, sir. You hear the suit? I do obey thee till I give thee bail. But, sirrah, you shall buy this sport as dear as all the metal in your shop will answer. Sir, sir, I shall have law in Ephesus to your notorious shame. I doubt it not. Master, there's a bark of epidandum that stays but till her owner comes aboard and then she bears away. A fraughtage, sir, I have conveyed aboard and I have bought the oil, the balsamum and aqua vitae. The ship is in her trim. The merry wind blows fair from land. They stay for naught at all but for their owner, master and yourself. How now, a madman? Why, thou peevish sheep? What ship of epidandum stays for me? A ship you sent me to, to hire waftage. Thou drunken slave, I sent thee for a rope. And told thee to what purpose and what end? You sent me for a rope's end, sir, as soon. You sent me to the bay, sir, for a bark. I will debate this matter at more leisure. And teach your ears to list me with more heed. To Adriana, villain, hie thee straight. Give her this key and tell her in the desk that's covered o'er with Turkish tapestry there is a purse of ducats. Let her send it. Tell her I am arrested in the street and that shall bail me. Hie thee, slave, be gone. On, officer, oh, to prison sir. till it come. To Adriana. That is where we dined, where Dowser built it. She is too big, I hope, for me to compass. Thither I must, although against my will, servants must their master's minds fulfil. Here, go. The desk, the purse. Sweet now, make haste. How hast thou lost thy breath? By running fast. Where is thy master, Dromeo? Is he well? No, he's in Tartar limbo, worse than hell. A devil in an everlasting garment hath him, one whose hard heart is buttoned up with steel, a fiend, a fury, pitiless and rough, a wolf, nay worse, a fellow all in buff, a back friend, a shoulder clapper, one that countermands the passages of alleys, creeks and narrow lands, a hound that runs counter, yet draws dry foot well, one that before the judgment carries poor souls to hell. Why, man, what is the matter? I do not know the matter. He is rested on the case. What? Is he arrested? 
Tell me at whose suit. I know not at whose suit he is arrested, Well, but he's in a suit of buff which rested him, that can I tell. Will you send him, Mistress Redemption, the money in his desk? Go fetch it, sister. This I wonder at, that he unknown to me should be in debt. Tell me, was he arrested on a band? Not on a band, but on a stronger thing. A chain, a chain. Do you not hear it ring? What, the chain? No, no, the bell. Tis time that I were gone. It was two when I left him, and now the clock strikes one. The hour has come back. That did I never hear. Oh, yes. If any hour meet a sergeant, I turn to the very fear. As if time were in debt. A reason. Time is a very bankrupt and owes more than he's worth to season. Nay, he's a thief, too. Have you not heard men say that time comes stealing on by night and day? If I be in debt and theft and a sergeant in the way, have he not reason to turn back an hour in a day? Go, Dromeo. There's the money. Bear it straight and bring thy master home immediately. Antipholus of Syracuse, wearing the gold chain, walks into the marketplace of Ephesus. There's not a man I meet but doth salute me, as if I were their well-acquainted friend. And every one doth call me by my name. Some tender money to me, some invite me. Some other give me thanks for kindnesses. Some offer me commodities to buy. Even now, a tailor called me in his shop and showed me silks that he had bought for me, and therewithal took measures of my body. Sure, these are but imaginary wiles, and Lapland sorcerers inhabit here. Master, 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 here's the gold you sent me for. What gold is this? Is there any ship puts forth tonight? May we be gone? Why, sir, I brought you word an hour since that the bar expedition put forth tonight. And then were you hindered by the sergeant to tarry for the hoy delay. Here are the angels that you sent for to deliver you. The fellow is distracted, and so am I. And here we wander in illusions. Some blessed power deliver us from hence. The courtesan is looking for Antiphilus of Ephesus, who has promised her the gold chain intended for Adriana. Master Antipholus, I see, sir, you have found the goldsmith now. Is that the chain you promised me today? Satan, avoid. I charge thee, tempt me not. Master, is this mistress Satan? It is the devil. Nay, she is worse. She is the devil's dam. And here she comes in the habit of a light wench. Come not near her. You're man and you are marvellous merry, sir. Will you go with me? We'll mend our dinner here. Master, if you do, expect spoon meat or bespeak a long spoon. Why, Dromeo? Marry, he must have a long spoon that must eat with the devil. Avoid, thou fiend. What tellst thou me of sucking? Thou art, as you all are, a sorceress. I come to thee to leave me and be gone. Give me the ring of mine you had at dinner, or for my diamond the chain you promised, and I'll be gone, sir, and not trouble you. Some devils ask but the parings of one's nails, a rush, a hair, a drop of blood, a pin, a nut, a cherry stone. But she, more covetous, would have a chain. Master, be wise, and if you give it her, the devil will shake her chain and fight us with it. I pray you, sir, my ring, or else the chain. I hope you do not mean to cheat me so. Avaunt, thou witch! Come, Dromeo, let us go. Fly, bride, says the peacock. Mistress, that you know. Now, out of doubt, Antipholus is mad. Else would he never so demean himself. A ring he hath of mine worth forty ducats, and for the same he promised me a chain. Both one and other he denies me now. The reason that I gather he is mad, besides this present instance of his rage, is a mad tale he told today at dinner, of his own doors being shut against his entrance. <laughs> Belike his wife, acquainted with his fits, on purpose shut the doors against his way. My way is now to hie home to his house and tell his wife that being lunatic, he rushed into my house and took perforce my ring away. This course I fittest choose, for forty ducats is too much to lose. Antipholus of Ephesus returns, escorted by the officer. Now, fear me not, man, I will not break away. I'll give thee ere I leave thee so much money, warrant thee as I am arrested for. My wife is in a wayward mood today and will not lightly trust the messenger. But I should be attached in Ephesus, I tell you, to sound harshly in her ears. Here comes my man. I think he brings the money. How now, sir? 
Have you that I sent you for? Uh, yes, then I warrant you will pay them all. But where's the money? Why, sir, I gave the money for the rope. Five hundred ducats, villain, for a rope? I'll serve you, sir, five hundred. To what end did I bid thee hide thee home? To a rope's end, sir, and to that end am I returned. And to that end, sir, I will welcome you. Oh, sir, ah, patient! No, in adversity! Could you hold thy tongue? May I rather persuade him? Blows! So is an ass. An ass, indeed, you may prove it, my mind. I have so much liberty to this instant. I have enough of his hands to my service but blows. When I'm old, he eats me with beating. I'm warm, he cools me with beating. I'm wake with when I sleep, raised with it when I sit, driven out of doors with it when I go to my welcome home with it when I return. Nay, I'm fed on my shoulders as a beggar wanted breath. I think when he hath lamed me, I shall beg it from door to door. Oh! Come along, my wife is coming yonder. Mistress, respect ye finem, respect your end, or rather, to miss her like the parrot, beware the rope. Wilt thou still talk? Oh! oh well, so you know, is not your husband mad? His incivility confirms the less. Good Dr. Pishuara Conjurer, establish him in his true sense again, and I will please you what you will demand. Alas, how fiery and how sharp he looks. Mark how he trembles in his ecstasy. Well, give me your hand and let me feel your pulse. There is my hand, and let it feel your ear. Oh, I charge thee, Satan, housed within this man, to yield possession to my holy prayers, and to thy state of darkness hide thee straight. I conjure thee by all the saints in heaven. Peace, doting Zerdis, I am not mad. Oh, thou wert not, poor distressed soul. You, minion, you, are these your customers? Did this in with the saffron face at my house today, whilst upon me the doors were shut and I denied to enter in my house? Oh, has God doth know you dined at home? Where would you had remained until this time, free from these slanders and this open shame? Dined home? Thou, villain, what sayest thou? Sir, sooth to say, you did not dine at home. Why not my doors locked up and I shut out? Purdy, your doors were locked and you shut out. And did not she herself revile me there? Sans fable, she herself reviled you there. And did not I enrage depart from thence? In verity you did. My bones bear witness that so felt the vigour of his rage. Is it good to soothe him in these contraries? It is no shame. The fellow finds his vein and, yielding to him, humours well his friends there. Thou hast suborned the goldsmith to arrest me. Alas, I sent you money to redeem you by Dromeo here, who came in haste for it. Money by me? Heart and good will you might, but surely, master, not a rag of money. Whence not thou to her for a purse of ducats? He came to me and I delivered it. And I am witness with her that she did. God and the rope maker bear me witness that I am for nothing but a rope. Mistress, both man and master is possessed. I know it by their pale and deadly looks. They must be bound and laid in some dark room. Say wherefore didst thou lock me forth today? And why dost thou deny the bag of gold? I did not. Gentle husband, lock thee forth. And gentle master, I receive no gold. But I confess, sir, that we were locked out. Dissembling villain, thou speakst false in both. Dissembling harlot, thou art false in all. And art confederate with a damned pack to make a loathsome abject scorn of me. But with these nails I'll pluck out these false eyes. Oh, bind him, bind him. Let him not come near me. More company. Oh, oh. But the feel is strong within him. I mean, poor man, how pale and wan he looks. Oh. What, will you murder me? Thou, jailer, thou, I am thy prisoner. Wilt thou suffer them to make a rescue? The masters, let him go. He is my prisoner. You shall not have him. Go bind his man, for he is frantic to a What wilt thou do, thou peevish officer? Hast thou delight to see a wretched man do outrage and displeasure to himself? He is my prisoner. If I let him go, the debt he owes will be required of me. I will discharge thee ere I go from thee. Bear me forthwith unto his creditor, and knowing how the debt grows, I will pay it. Good master doctor, see him safe conveyed home to my house. Oh, most unhappy day. Oh, most unhappy strumpet. Master, I am here entered in bond for you. Doubt on thee, villain. Wherefore dost thou mad me? Will you be bound for nothing? Be mad, good master. Cry the devil. God help poor souls. How idly do they talk. Go, bear him hence. <laughs> Sister, go you with me. Say now, whose suit is he arrested at? Well, Angelo, a goldsmith. Do you know him? I know the man. What is the sum he owes? Two hundred ducats. Say, how grows it due? Due for a chain your husband had of him. He did the seeker chain for me, but had it not. 
When has your husband, all in rage, today came to my house and took away my ring, the ring I saw upon his finger now, straight after did I meet him with a chain? It may be so, but I did never see it. Come, jailer, bring me where the goldsmith is. I long to know the truth hereof at large. Antipholus of Syracuse and his Dromeo arrive with drawn swords. Oh, for thy mercy, they are loose again! Then come with naked swords! Let's call more help to have them bound again! Away, away, they'll kill us! I see these witches are afraid of swords. She that would be your wife now ran from you. Come to the centre, fetch our stuff. I long that we were safe and sound aboard. Faith, stay here this night, they will surely do us no harm. You see, they speak us fair, give us gold. Methinks they're such a gentle nation that but for the mountain of mad flesh that claims marriage on me, I could find it in my heart to stay here still and turn witch. I will not stay tonight for all the town. Therefore, away to get our stuff aboard. I'm sorry, sir, that I have hindered you, but I protest he had the chain of me. The most dishonestly he does deny it. How is the man esteemed here in the city? A very reverent reputation, sir. A credit infinite, highly beloved. Second to none that lives here in the city. His word might bear my wealth at any time. Speak softly. Yonder as I think he walks. It is so. And that self-chain about his neck which he forswore most monstrously to have. Good sir, draw near with me. I'll speak to him. Senior Antipholus, I wonder much that you would put me to this shame and trouble, and not without some scandal to yourself, with circumstance and oath, so to deny this chain which now you wear so openly? Beside the charge, the shame, imprisonment, you have done wrong to this, my honest friend. Well, but for staying on our controversy, at hoisted sail and put to sea today. This chain you had of me, can you deny it? I think I had. I never did deny it. Yes, that you did, sir, and forswore it too. Who heard me to deny it or forswear it? <laughs> These ears of mine now most did hear thee. Fie on thee, wretch, tis pity that thou livest to walk where any honest men resort. Thou art a villain to impy thus. I'll prove my honour and mine honesty against thee presently if thou darest stand. I dare, and do defy thee for a villain. <laughs> Not for God's sake, he is mad. Some get within him, take his sword away, bind Romeo too, and bear them to my house. Run, master, run. For God's sake, take a house. This is some priory. In, or we are spoiled. Prisoner arrives outside the priory, headed by the Duke of Ephesus. Aegeon on his way to execution. Yet once again proclaim it publicly, if any friend will pay the sum for him, he shall not die. So much we tender him. Justice, most sacred duke, against the abbess. She is a virtuous and a reverend lady. It cannot be that she hath done thee wrong. May it please your grace. Antipholus, my husband, who had all I had at your important letters, this ill day a most outrageous fit of madness took him. That desperately he hurried through the street, with him his bondmen all as mad as he, doing displeasure to the citizens by rushing in their houses, bearing thence, rings, jewels, anything his rage did like. Once did I get him bound and sent him home, whilst to take order for the wrongs I went that here and there his fury had committed. Anon, I wot not by what strong escape he broke from those that had the guard of him, and with his mad attendant and himself, each one with our full passion, with drawn swords, us again, and madly bent on us, chased us away. Till raising of more aid, we came again to bind them. Then they fled into this abbey, whither we pursued them. And here the abbess shuts the gates on us, will not suffer us to fetch him out, nor send him forth, that we may bear him hence. Therefore, most gracious duke, with thy command, let him be brought forth and borne hence for help. Go, some of you, knock at the abbey gate, and bid the lady abbess come to me. I will determine this before I stir. <laughs> Oh, mistress, mistress, shift and save yourself. My master and his man are both broke loose, beaten the maids alone, and bound the doctor, whose beard they have singed off with brands of fire, and ever as it blazed, they threw on him great pails of puddled mire to quench the hair. My master preaches patience to him, and the while his man with scissors nicks him like a fool. And sure, unless you send some present help, between them they will kill the conjurer. Peace, fool. Thy master and his man are here, and that is false thou dost report to us. Mistress, upon my life, I tell you true. 
I have not breathed almost since I did see it. He cries for you and vows if he can take you to scorch your face and to disfigure you. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Hark, hark, I hear him, mistress. Fly, be gone. Come stand by me. Fear nothing. Guard with halberds. Oh, I knee. It is my husband. Witness you that he is born about invisible. Even now we housed him in the abbey here. And now he's there. Past thought of human reason. Justice, most gracious Duke, oh, grant me justice. Unless the fear of death doth make me dote, I see my son Antiphilus and Dromeo. Most mighty Duke, vouchsafe me speak a word. Happily I see a friend will save my life and pay the sum that may deliver me. Speak freely, Syracusian, what thou wilt. Is not your name, sir, called Antiphilus? And is not that your bondman, Dromeo? Within this hour I was his bondman, sir, but he, I thank him, not in two mics. Now am I Dromeo and his man unbound. I'm sure you both of you remember me. Ourselves we do remember, sir, by you, for lately we were bound as you are now. You are not Pinch's patient, are you, sir? Why look you strange on me? You know me well. I never saw you in my life till now. Oh, great, you have changed me since you saw me last. And careful hours with time's deformed hand have written strange defeatures in my face. But tell me yet, dost thou not know my voice? Neither. Dromeo, nor... Th no, trust me, sir, nor I. I'm sure thou dost. I say that I am sure I do not. And whatsoever a man denies, you are now bound to believe him. Not know my voice. Oh, time's extremity, hast thou so cracked and splitted my poor tongue in seven short years... That here my only son knows not my feeble key of untuned cares. Thou art my son Antiphilus. I never saw my father in my life. But seven years since in Syracuse a boy, thou knowst we parted. But perhaps, my son, thou shamest to acknowledge me in misery. The Duke and all that know me in the city can witness with me that this is not so. I ne'er saw Syracuse in my life. I tell thee, Syracusean, twenty years have I been patron to Antiphilus during which time he ne'er saw Syracuse. I see thy age and dangers make thee dote. Most mighty duke, beheld a man much wrong. Oh. I see two husbands. Oh, mine eyes deceive me. One of these men is genius to the other. And so of these, which is the natural man and which the spirit? Who deciphers them? I, Sir Andromio. Ay, Sir Andromeo, pray let me stay. Aegean art thou not, or else his ghost. Oh, my old master, who hath bound him here? Whoever bound him, I will loose his bonds, and gain a husband by his liberty. Speak, old Aegean, if thou beest the man that hast a wife once called Amelia, that bore thee at a burden two fair sons. Oh, if thou beest the same Aegean, speak, and speak unto the same Amelia. If I dream not, thou art Amelia. Which of you two did dine with me today? I, gentle mistress. And are not you my husband? No, I say nay to that, and so do I. Yet did she call me so, and this fair gentlewoman, her sister here, did call me brother. What I told you then, I hope I shall have leisure to make good, if this be not a dream I see and hear. That is the change, sir, which you had of me? I think it be, sir, I deny it not. And you, sir, for this chain arrested me. I think I did, sir. I deny it not. I sent you money, sir, to be your bail by Dromeo. But I think he brought it not. No, none by me. This purse of ducats I received from you, and Dromeo, my man, did bring them me. I see we still did meet each other's man, and I was tame for him and he for me, and thereupon these errors are arose. These ducats pawn I for my father here. It shall not need. Thy father hath his life. Sir, I must have that diamond from you. There, take it, and uh, much thanks for thy good cheer. <laughs> Renowned Duke, vouchsafe to take the pains to go with us into the abbey here, and here at large discoursed all our fortunes, and all that are assembled in this place that by this sympathized one day's error have suffered wrong, go keep us company and we shall make full satisfaction. Thirty-three years have I but gone in travail of you, my sons, until this present hour my heavy burden ne'er delivered. The Duke, my husband, 
and my children both, and you, the calendars of their nativity, go to a gossip's feast and joy with me after so long being such nativity. With all my heart, I'll gossip with this feast. <laughs> Master, shall I fetch your staff from shipboard? Romeo, what stuff of mine has thou embarked? Your goods that lay at house, sir, in the centre. He speaks to me. I am your master, Dromeo. Oh, oh, come, <laughs> go with us. We'll look to that anon. Embrace thy brother there. Rejoice with him. There is a, a fat friend at your master's house that kitchened me for you today at dinner. She now shall be my sister, not my wife. Methinks you are my glass and not my brother. I see by you I am a sweet-faced youth. Will you walk in to see their gossiping? Not I, sir. You are my elder. That's the question. How shall we try it? We'll draw cuts for the senior. Till then, lead thou first. Nay then, thus. We came into the world like brother and brother, and now let's go hand in hand, not one before another. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.